feeling good. <laughs> Allah, who act but Allah, who act but Allah, who act but Allah. Kind and merciful. 
And Allah says, it is he who gives smiles, happiness, and you maybe you get sadness, frown and smile, but he the one who gives the smiles. And so under these masks, I know I'm smiling a lot. You can't see it, so fill my heart, because I'm feeling really good today. <laughs> I'm pretty loud, but I mean. Yom Juma today, Yom Juma. So, as we pray from the beginning, as we say, Rabbana Ati Nafi Dunya Hasanatain, Wafi Ati Rati Hasanatain, Wafi Nafi Dunya Hasanatain, Oh, our Rab. You see how beautiful it is? He's merciful, but he, but, most times we say, Rabbana. We say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You know, Rab, they loosely say, Lord. But loose, you read, really caretaker, nourisher, sustainer, evolver. I mean, all this is goodness. Now we say, Allahu Akbar, that's Allah proper, the whole thing. But look, he's mer Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, right? Alhamdulillah, Rambel Alami. The Rab, right? Subhanahu so, Rambel Alami. Glory to my evolver, the caretaker, the nourisher. When we go into Sajda, Subhanahu so, Rambel Alami, right? Dua, Rambel Alami. Oh, our caretaker. Oh, our nourisher. Oh, our sustainer. Oh, our evolver. You know, you know where that fits in at? To give you some idea, it's no comparison, but it's associated with that also. Parent, that Allah is the creator, right? Your parent, your mother give you birth, right? But a rab is the nourisher, the sustainer. Like your mother will just drop you and say, hey, you're on your own, just got here. How do you make it in the world, right? The nature is to take care of you, involve you, provide nourishment and sustainer, right? To help you evolve and grow, right? So Allah used that. So Reb, Allah is out call it the creator. So he don't create us and say, hey, you on your own. He say, kum fa kum, I'm out of you on your own. So he lets us know he's the Reb, the one who provides for us, nourishes us, sustains us, give us what we need to bring us stage by stage to evolve us to our level of completion. So right within there, Merciful. Alhamdulillah. He don't just evolve us. Alhamdulillah. He's the caretaker, the nourisher, the sustainer of all the world. Everything that exists belongs to him. And he don't leave it out there. He takes care of it. That's why we ask him for the best in this life. Evolve us into the best and help us to sustain it. You read all the translations, right? Some say sustainer, some say nourisher, right? Evolve a caretaker. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So we say, Rabbil Alameen, if you're doing your husband the thing, why fit accurately, husband the thing, why can you answer that No. Oh, our nourisher. Oh, our evolver. Oh, our caretaker. Give us the best in this life. Evolve us into the best. Help us to sustain the best. Right? When you get it, you want him to help us to nourish it and sustain it. Right? So it grows even better and we be able to keep it and pass it on and pass it on and pass it on. So we ask the Rabb. Rabb and Nafi doing it. Give us the best in this life so we have the best schools, the best master, the best family the best health, the best business, the best mindset, right? The best everything in this life, the proving ground. And then we want the best. So here, right then, Quran tell you, brother, sister, never be afraid to ask for what you want. You want something, you need something, you go to Allah. You ask Allah, Rabbana, give us the best. Now and later. Don't break the chain, right? No, just, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just right now. It's like you go to a car deal with somebody. 
And he charged you so much money for one time. And you say, man, I ain't going back there. But if he had treated you right, he got a customer for a lifetime. Right? And you know how that goes? Say, you give a man a fish, he eat for a day, right? You teach him how to fish, he eat for a lifetime. So that's what Allah gave us, right? Ask for it now and for the later. Whatever that life is beyond this, right? The best and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Dear believers, Muslim brothers and sisters, we pray that Allah the Most High will accept our Juma today. Cut by in the salat. And cleanse our hearts and our minds. That our intentions will be clean on them. You know, Quran is science. The world has learned from Quran, even though they may not say it. The world is a book for all times, for all of humanity. And it impacted the whole world, the European world, all of Rule, Spain, Muslims, all of that. What about the Renaissance? That's Quran. The world, the Western world, I want to say the Western Europeans, others used to think the world was flat, right? That if you go so far, you're going to fall off. It was the Muslims who brought in that knowledge that no, it's not flat, it's round. But about that growth and development of the world, as Allah said, He sent this Quran to bring mankind out of darkness into light. Alhamdulillah, he read that. I mean, so Allah says in Surah 7. So it's seven. Al Araf, the heights. And the word Arafat comes from that same root, the Ayn Rafat, Arafat, the heights. And, you know, Arafat associated with Hajj, you have to make it there to the high level, right? And this is source seven. Isn't that interesting? The heights, seven. And Muhammad the Prophet went to the seven levels, the seven heights up, oh, right? So it's on. And Allah says he made seven levels, right? So Allah says here in this story, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, just being thankful to Allah the Most High, always grateful, good times, bad times. We plan and Allah plan and Allah's the best of plans. We may see things or experience things that may be difficulty to us, but Allah be pressing you, pressing you sometimes to bring the best out. You know, what they say, if you press that coal or something turns to a diamond, press it, bring the, something in you, you don't even know what's inside of you. Sometimes that's difficulty situation is to bring that out. You know, it's associated with us. Like the great us means to press. And when you read the story of Joseph, and he was in prison, he had one guy he dreamed that he was pressing grapes. And it's come to the same word, us. Meaning it's pressing to get the juice and make the peel fall off. That's why I saw us as well, us. It's a pressing to get to the juice. That's how you do grapes. You press to get to the juice. So the other part falls off, and us is associated with that. So Allah said, well, us. In that and saying, I love you, us. In that and saying, I am in you, I am in you, so I am in What do I say, Bill Hawk? What do I say, Bill Seller? That man is in loss over a time of pressing and pressing. Except what? Those who believe and do good deeds to get to the Jews. Right? You're pressing, you're pressing. What we see going on now in the world, all the crazy stuff, racism, this, that, and the other. Pressing, pressing, pressing. To expose the outer shell, like we just saw down there in Bridgewater, okay? I just it. And some of the other stuff. But to get to the juice, so you and I can see what it's all about. Get to the main. Get off the surface, right? Pressing us. So Allah is all kind and merciful, and we have challenges. We will always have challenges in life. And Allah say, do you think you're going to be able to say you believe and not be tried and tested? For surely he tried and tested those before you. 
for some time pressing. Because sometimes we don't, we don't know what's inside of us, right? We don't know the value. We may think we can't handle this situation or that situation. But you may be pressed with it to really show that you can. And then it helps the future because when somebody else run into something like that, you can help them say, been there, done that. This is how you do it, young man. So we'll have these things and we thank Allah for that. So Allah says in Quran, in this surah, and it means knowledge also, um, Arab. It really associated with higher knowledge because it also means to know. When you read Quran and you and you hear this all the time, it says, We have made you tribes, nations, etc., that you will know one another. And then they'll put in parenthesis and not despise one another, right? Different races, nations, that is not about that. Allah made you that way so you will know. And the word that you use here, we know ill, right? Knowledge, but it doesn't use it. It, it says in that sentence structure, "Lead the arafu, arafa, that you will come to know each other on a higher level." Yes, you have your different cultures and nationality. That's one thing, but I made you that lead the arafu, so you will come into a higher knowledge of each other. And so, it's no accident, Muhammad the Prophet said, "Salam and arafa shared knowledge with us in his farewell address." That's really higher knowledge. They say no superiority of an Arab over a non Arab. This is fair with the And Arafat. Higher. Now, there's no superiority of Arab over non Arab. What are you talking about? I saw how you treated Bilal. There's no superiority of a white over a black or a black over a white. Your strength is in your service, your taqwa to mankind, etc. Right? Beautiful knowledge. Now, and he also reported to have said, now those of you who are present, make sure that you inform those that are absent. Don't keep it secret. Those of you who are present, make sure you inform those that are absent. So that's how eventually you write it down because we wasn't there and now you got it documented, right? But even now, those of you who are present, inform those that are absent. Because perhaps, just maybe, those that are absent will comprehend better than those of you who are present. So that's knowledge. So anyway, at Arafat. So here, a lot with Quran. Allah says here, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ayat eleven. In Surah 7. That Allah says, Surely He created you, all of you. Nobody else created you. Whatever they're calling upon, Allah says, He's the creator and the best of creators. Allah says, He created you. And listen to this. Thumma, then. Thumma, so so Rakum, then saw it. He formed you. He gave you your shape. He created you by saying kum fai kum in the womb. Then he shaped you. In another place, and he made your form, all your forms most beautiful. So he gave you your form and your pattern. This is Quran, son. And then he says, now going back to the history of Father Adam, all of it, just the whole, but but it, but it's saying is here. And he formed you. This is it. He said, Thumat, then he formed you. Thumat, Kuna lil mela ikati du du li adame. Fasenja du illa iblisa. Lem ya kumen el sejidin. And then he said, Now look what he said. I created you. All of you. History always. And then he said, and I gave you your shapes and your form. Then he said, and we said to the angels. Now this is beautiful. A lot of we already know there's angels assigned to us. Right and left, 
right? We know that, right? He said, recording our deeds and moving us and protecting us, etc., right? And even in the Salat, if you want to say it, when you're in the Salat, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're walking with me my whole life. Of course I want peace for you, angel on my right. And I want an angel on my left. So he said, then he said to the angels, brothers and sisters, make sajda. Make sajda to Adam, that mind, that human consciousness. Because we know Adam is not just flesh, he's a mind. Because Allah says he taught Adam. Adam is taught by Allah, right, in Bakura. Same story, he says, but then he taught Adam, as man at Kulahan, the names of everything. Right? So he learned with a mind. So Allah says, once he shaped us, he said to the angels, make some do, make such to, to Adam. And he said, they all made such to, they agreed to help us, to submit to us completely. This is Surah 7. And what do Muhammad the Prophet would say? He said, what is sajda? He said, when seven bones touch the ground. And he pointed, right? He said, the forehead is one. Right hand is two. Left hand is three. Right knee is four. Left knee is five. Right toes is six. Left toes is seven. So in so seven, he said, so what that means, seven completion, we know that, right? So, so the angel to make complete submission to offer themselves to us completely. And we know it because the best thing that was given to a human being was Quran. And Allah assigned Jibril to bring Quran, right? And Allah said to the angels, come gather together for me. If Paul and Lil Malaikati in Nijah alone fill out the Khalifa, and he said to the angels, I am create, I am making a Khalifa in the earth. And Allah in his kindness, he could have just did it. But he did it and told them because their role, their responsibility is going to increase. And that's what they said. Why are you doing? We praise you, we glorify you. That, that's right. That's what you're doing. But I'm bringing another creature so your responsibility is going to expand. Now you're going to be an angel of revelation, right? To bring to this new human being. You're going to be an angel of death to bring, right? You're going to be an angel on their right and on their left. Your role is going to expand. And we even see now, right in our neighborhood, right with us, you know, it happens all the time. The angel of death is really big. I mean, we have been doing a janazza, several janazzas every day this week. Right? We've been seeing that in this world, not just a, a, a pandemic, but we're seeing this. That's the angel of death, as Allah say, who comes and takes the soul. Busy, right? So your, your role is going to expand. So now Allah says here, now I tell you to submit and help this new creation completely. Seven. And they say, all of them may say the brothers and sisters. They all love it. <laughs> they all of them except one. They get it one. It bleeds. Allah says, well, Ebed was stuck, but he refused and so it's so bigger than what he was. So they all did except Iblis, who was a jinn, but he was among the angels. And he smoked this fire. Angels associated with light, etc., etc. Now you know it's interesting when you when you read. Allah says He's made of fire, and the angels associated with light. But you can see how He was among them, and even if they didn't even know He was different, it's because one of the main characteristics of fire is what it gives light. The sun is a ball of fire, right? That's our solar system. When you burn a candle, that's light. Even these here, this is associated with fire, right? What kind of fire was it? Electrical fire. It's associated with fire, right? So anyway, keep moving on. So he said, all except Iblis. He's the only 
one that didn't make sajda. He didn't agree to help us. In fact, he agreed to work against us, I'm not saying. And look what Allah says. Allah says, in language we can understand, everybody going to sajda, and this one just standing up. I don't do that. I don't, I don't make such a like that, man. I don't, I don't humble to that. I don't humble to that religion. I don't humble to those people, right? And then look what Allah said. Allah says, Call that ma man And he said, What's with you? What's with you? And that test. You dare eat that. Yes, what's with you that you don't make sense as I commanded you to? And listen to what he said. Call that an Akairo Minhu. Kalaktani Minari. You created me from fire. Kalaktahu Mintin. And you created him from mud. That's why I'm better than him. You created me from fire. Now, now here in Surah 7, what we also see just not only in this story, we see the science that Allah presents and the world even have said that that life, the world, life itself, it, what permeates in life itself are four basic elements that make up life, right, that exist. Four basic elements, right? And they tell us what that is, right? Water, you know, we always heard the group earth, wind, and fire. But it's four. Water, earth, material thing, right? Water, earth, air, and fire. They say those are the basic elements in the universe that, that exist. And Allah says that he provided with everything in four periods, right? Four basic elements. This is science of Quran. Keep that in mind. Water, right? We have to have water, right? And water has so much meaning. It's not only just for drinking. Water is used, we have to go to wudu, be clean, right? Use water for communication. Remember they used to put a bottle in the water and send it on the other side of the river? And they use it for transportation now, right? Boats, right? Shipments on water, right? But water, life has to have water. Allah say make all life from water. Earth, right? And you know, earth, material things, right? It's material. Air, and fire, ball of fire, the sun, right? We have to have fire, not only to cook, but if this fire burns out, man, we're done, right? It's a ball of fire, giving us it called solar system. Now, look, look how this is. Is, is here in Quran. First, Allah says, and, and Iblis repeated, He made us from thing, right? From mud. Mud, clay consists of two things, right? Water and earth, right? Water and earth makes mud, right? Iblis say He's a creature of fire. So now, Allah, you present the fire, right? So you got water, earth, and you got fire. When you go to source 15, Allah says, Faka Ula who said he did fall down and make sajda to him after what? Ruhi. After I have breathed into him. And the same word in Arabic for air and breath is ruh. Same root. Same word. Ruh. Ruh. Ruhi, my breath, my air, means the same. Except for air that we breathe and spirit. Spirit and air. When I have breathed into him. So they're going to fall right there. Right? When he make them clay, that's water, earth, science of Quran. Right? It bleeds, I'm a fire. Right? And Allah said, Whew! when I have breathed into him, my spirit, air, right? And he became alive. Now, that connects directly to the Salah. Kind of good. How do we Salah? Let's, let's walk through this before we go. Water, right? 
We have to make wudu, right? Now, first, before the salat, what is the call? Haya salat. Haya is alive, living. Right? Allah is called al-hayu, the living. Haya salat. Come alive to salat. Salat is our source of life. Haya salat. Right? Haya is life, living. So Islam is a call to life. Always remember that. Even though it says come, know that the word haya means live, alive, living. Allah in uh, Ayatul Kursi, Bakura 255 is called al hayu the living. So when you hear that call, it really means come alive to Salah. Salah is your source of life, right? And then haya for that. You want a successful life. So all life, Allah tells us start from water. So we go to the wudu, right? Wudu, right? It's water. Then in the Salat, do we just stay up here? Or do we go down to the earth? Connect you to the earth, right? If you're outside, way before we had these buildings, we got to go down to the earth, right? So that's earth. Water and earth in the Salat, right? Then, the air, the spirit, right? The right spirit of the Salat. We don't pray to an object. We don't pray to a man or to a tree. Allah say, come to, come to prayer, not just to be seen of men, but with the right heart and the right spirit, right? You know, Salat, our whole life is about a good, righteous spirit in this material body, right? And then, so that's air. And Allah said, when he wants to guide you, he put Islam in the Sudur, right? In your chest where your lungs are. Go read Surah 6. Allah said when he wants to guide you, he expands the sudor with Islam. And what's in there? That's where we get the air and breathe, right? And then, so that's three. And we know the sun, right? That's the fire. That's science. And how do we, we know that's connected to Salat because our Salat, brothers, sisters, is regulated after the consistent, peaceful movement of the sun, a ball of fire, right? When the sun break on the horizon, we make fashion. When the sun reaches zenith, we do what? Boo. And then when it tilts a little bit, we do ah, the sun, not the moon, not the star, not the clouds. And then when the sun sets, we do Isha. So you see these four basic elements that science of Quran, and they all have beautiful meaning. Why the sun? Because just like the sun is the light and light of our world and give us protein and vitamin and all that we need can live without it, Salat is the light and life of our life. That doesn't the sun, whatever benefit you get from the sun, you get it from Salat a million times. That's the greatest light that we know, right? So why wouldn't it be connected to that? And to precaution, to caution us from saying, Shamsi Akbar, sun is greater. What do we say? As a precaution. Allahu Akbar. When that sun breaks, right? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And in the Salat, Allahu Akbar, not Shamsi Akbar. This has great meaning. Allahu Akbar. So we see right here in Quran these four basic elements with rich meaning. Beauty of Quran. So know that it was wisdom like that and much more that brought the world out of darkness into light. It wasn't the little things. It was science. Kindness. The richness that brought this world to where it's at now even though they don't want to tell us. It was Muhammad the prophet, the book believers, who brought Quran and then Islam spread outside of that peninsula into Europe, up into Asia, into Africa, all up into Europe. Then by the grace of Allah, jumped over the Atlantic. Quran flew over the Atlantic 1,400 years later. But they were trying to shut it down just then, right? And Allah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, blessed us to get al-Islam. 
with all the efforts to stop it. And he gave us this prayer, El Fatiha. And you know it's the victorious prayer, but we were victory over those who wanted to lock it from us. It's the opening, and it means victory, because there's a sore called fat, and that sore is called the victory. And then we have sore help, right? Well, I said, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When comes the help of Allah and the victory? I think that's either 110 or 105, right? So it means, it means the victorious opening because there were those who do it now try to lock the door of Islam. Seven try to block it. And the old book said it was a book of seven seals, but it was sealed. So they're always trying to lock this, give the wrong image of Islam. But by the grace of Allah, he opened the door, brother. He gave us the key, brother, sister. He said, come on in, my true and faithful servants. And be grateful that Allah allowed us to hear the call. Come through the door of Al-Islam. And Allah says, enter the door wholeheartedly. And there's a whole lot there. So al fatiha seven off repeated verses. But it also means the victory, the victorious prayer. And be grateful and thankful that over all that time, oh, just picture this before we go. You know how long, 1,400 years? You know, every turn they tried to stop this. Every turn. But have they been able to do it? The last place they expect to fall out in the hood, hmm. all the stuff they brought from us, just like back then, when they embraced Islam, you know what the, the rich big shot said? Ah, oh, that's nothing. That's of the meanest of the people. Right? The Umiyyin and the common people. So they have planned down. That's the Iblis mentality. Oh, I don't submit to that. I don't submit to that which you created a mud. The low life. So praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, right there, 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 Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So dear believers, before we close, just remind us here, be grateful and thankful you Muslims and your believers. And be thankful you're able to hear the call of al-Islam. And Allah in his mercy allowed us to see al-Islam, to hear al-Islam to embrace Al-Islam. And as we pray, we ask Allah to help us to grow, to right, right? To grow in our goodness, grow in our kindness, grow in our knowledge, and be grateful. And no matter what goes on in our life, we'll be challenges. Always be grateful and thankful to Almighty Allah. And never forget this. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says, I've assigned angels. So there's things that happen that just seems strange. We don't know, right? We have to believe that Muhammad the prophet say, at Juma, right? The angels come in, they take attendance. And they come to show you how serious this is. I can't play with it, I smile, but angels come in, they sit down and listen to the cookbook. That's what he say, right? At the time they come in, when the cookbook start, angels sit and listen to the cookbook, right? And Allah says, uh, and, and we're coming up on Ramadan, show you how powerful this is. Allah says, the night that the Quran is revealed that started this in Ramadan, Allah says, of the night of power, tenezalu mele, angels, tenezalu mele iketu aruhu fi habi itni rabihim in kuliyamri. Then came down the angels and the spirit obeying Allah by every command, by, the, by his permission. So know that we have, my point is, know that we have help, seen and unseen. Always trust that. You have help. You are not alone. You lose a loved 
loved one. You lose this. This happened. That happened. Allah lets you know. And and I think you know it from the Quran. What do Allah say? Now then, forget about the angels. Don't forget. But this, look, look. Allah says he is closer to us than our juggler vein. Isn't that what he say? Allah say I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. And when you read Bakura right after reading 183, 185 about Ramadan, Allah says, when my servants ask concerning me, sister, brother, when they ask about me, he said, tell them I am near. Use the word Kareem, like a relative. Tell them I'm near, like this. And he says, and I respond to the dua of him or her who makes a dua when he makes it to me. That's what I lost, guaranteeing us. He says, so respond to me and believe in me so you will be rightly guided. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And Allah told him to make sense there. That's seven bones tested with him. It's complete submission. So we'll close reading something from Surah 65. So we'll go from seven, Surah 7, to this Surah here that mentions seven. And we'll close with that completely. Allah says in Surah 65 and Ayat 12. I just read 11 in the other one, right? I think so. <laughs> just what happened, this one is 12 in this surah. Allah said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah said, Qallaka Sab'a. Sab'a Samma Wadin wa Min Al Adi Mithla Huna. Yet the Nanzalul Emru Bina Huna. Allah says, Allah is he who created the seven heavens. And listen to this. Listen to this. The seven heavens, men of Adi, myth Luhuna, and in the earth, a like number. Seven up, and in other places, he make it clear. And he also say within you, seven up and seven down. Seven in the heavens, and seven, a like number in the earth. And Allah says, he says, and he sends down his command between the two of them. He commands what's between the two of them. But he says seven up and seven down. And we can connect that to Salat, right? Because when we stand it up, we recite seven ayat, right? Of El Fantiha, seven ad Medani, right? And then when we go down to Sajda, what do we do? That's seven. Seven up, El Fatiha. Muhammad the Prophet says, says there's when seven bones touch the ground, as we pointed out, right? Forehead one, right hand two, left hand three, right knee four, left knee five, right toe six, left toe seven. Seven up and seven down. A life number. But Allah says that he, by his command, he's in command of the two. And then he says, that you may know that Allah has power over all things, up or down. When you up, brother, Allahu Akbar, right? When you go down, Allahu Akbar. Because by the grace of Allah, you're going to come right back up from such there, right? So we may fall, but the beauty of it is by the grace of Allah, you'll get back up. And we know Allah says that, and we know even when we pass. Say, from the earth you come, right? To the earth you return, right? Just did it in that. And from the earth you'll be raised up again. So have faith in Allah. And then Allah closes, he says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ and surely Allah comprehends everything with his knowledge. 
So be people of faith. We pray for each other, keep each other in our faith and our prayers and the best for each other. Be strong. You'll have weak moments. You'll lose a loved one. We're doing genazas every day this week, man. More than one. So you'll be hit with strife and challenges. But be grateful and thankful to a Muslim. But you're not walking alone. You have angels. Allah is closer to us than our juggler vein. And no seven up, seven down. That's completion. And we turn to the Kaaba. And when you go there, you go seven times around. Then you perform the Sayyid, right? Between Safa and Mawa, right? Seven times. And then not only that right there, Allah say, and turn your face in the direction of the sacred master. When you go read that, we turn our whole body because we follow our head. But Allah says, turn your face. What's that? Specifically, right? It says, turn. We see you looking to the heaven. Now turn your face. What's that? Like the, your face, meaning your identity. Because your face is your identification, right? Look at the passport all that. Identify with the sacred master. And that's seven when you go around it. And Allah, what did he put in our face? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven ways to enter into our brain, right? And we're up here praying with this seven, looking at that seven. Then you bring this seven down to the earth, right? Seven up, seven down. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That's the beauty of Al-Islam. That's the beauty of the Quran. This is what will lift us up. It's what the 